Right, come on shoes, let's walk. Yesterday I received a message from somebody who was really struggling in their corporate job and they're really quite worried that they might get fired and they're questioning whether corporate is the right thing for them and they'd love to go on their own and start coaching but they're riddled with imposter syndrome and it got me thinking about what I think is imposter syndrome and what I don't think it is. I think it's a term that we're all pretty used to these days. Oh, I'm riddled with imposter syndrome. But actually, what does that mean? For me, I don't think imposter syndrome is what we use the term for on a day-to-day -day general basis. I think what we really are talking about is self-doubt. And self-doubt to me and imposter syndrome are two completely different things. So imposter syndrome is that feeling that you've kind of got where you are by luck, you feel like you're a fraud, you don't feel like you deserve to be there, you're worried you're going to get caught out, you're worried that people are going to realise that maybe you don't know as much as they think you know. And that to me is very different to self-doubt. Self-doubt is about questioning whether you can actually do something. So in this lady's case, she's questioning if she goes out on her own and starts her own business, can she actually do it? Is she going to be successful? Is she going to fail? Is she going to be judged? Are people going to question you know, her, her credibility? And all of these things are very, very normal whenever we're starting something that we've never done before. So I thought I'd use an example to show you how I see the two as being quite different. So I have been delivering talks and speeches and training to large groups for many years now and when I first started I would have a bit of self-doubt about my own abilities was I going to perform okay were people going to judge me and all of the other stuff that goes with self-doubt I didn't really have imposter syndrome because I hadn't even started doing it when I you know when I first got going so I didn't necessarily feel like an imposter but it was self-doubt more than anything it was self-doubt because I hadn't built up my own evidence bank to show that I could do the thing so I've been talking as I say for many years but in January this year or next year rather in January 2025 I've been invited to speak on stage alongside some people who for me are real sort of icons in in the online world people like Daniel Priestley and Angela Cox and these people that I look up to and I followed and for me whilst I have no doubt that I can get up and stand on the stage and talk confidently I have no doubt that what I'm talking about is likely to inspire some people it's likely to enlighten some people hopefully it will inform some people I don't have self-doubt about being up on that stage but I absolutely have imposter syndrome about it because I'm about to stand up there with people who in my eyes are way ahead of where I am so my imposter syndrome is saying oh who are you to stand up on stage alongside these big names who are you to be here you just got lucky, you know? No, but they, they didn't ask you because you're good at what you do. You just got lucky. That's imposter syndrome. So it's not self-doubt. And I see these as two different things. They both need the same sort of approach though, in my head, to, to deal with them. They both take courage. You've got to have the courage to push through the fears because both self-doubt and imposter syndrome, I believe, are, are rooted in fear. So. I still have to find the courage to try new things or to put myself out into a situation where I feel that imposter syndrome. For both imposter syndrome and self-doubt, I really have to look at the evidence that says I deserve to be here or 
that I can learn to do new things, that I can get better at something, that I can do the thing I want to do, even if I don't have all of the skills that I need right now. And that's about the self-doubt piece. So yeah, I just want to, this is just really a really quick video, uh, partly because I'm loaded with cold and I've come out for the day um, for a walk in the woods with my very, very competent camera girl. Just give me a hello there, Connie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> we're not going to bring her onto camera because uh, we're going to try and keep you an, an anonymous enigma. What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah. uh, but I've come out into the woods. I'm loaded with cold, but I just wanted to make this while it was fresh in my mind because I think sometimes we can get riddled with this <gasps> so much imposter syndrome. Well, we're probably more likely to have self-doubt. And the only way we can overcome self-doubt is to find the courage to actually push through and accept that, you know, we're probably not gonna be that great at something when we get started. But when we get started, we learn. You can't learn from a place of doing nothing. You can't learn really from a place of theory. It has to be through practice. And the only way we can get practiced at something is to take action and do it. Self-doubt is inherent in all of us, I believe. Imposter syndrome is inherent in all of us. It's just a, almost like a rite of passage we have to push through if we want to do the things that we want to do in life. And actually, if we are not feeling self-doubt, and if we're not getting any imposter syndrome, then chances are we're not really growing. So I'm going to leave it there because I can see my little camera work girl's arms starting to shake a little bit as she stood there she is also a tripod um with only two legs <laughs> so <coughs> don't make me laugh my cold i will talk to you all soon take care